Hi, Doc Montgomery. How are you? I'm doing quite well this afternoon. Mr. Gardner, how are you, sir? I'm uh, uh, you mean Miss Taylor? Hello, Mr. Montgomery. How are you? Um, Mr. Montgomery's in the other room playing video games. This is Dr. Richard Montgomery. I think I'm doing all right. <laughs> oh, my apologies. Please say to doctor, you did not go to all that schooling without me saying doctor. You are right. Dr. Yeah, Montgomery. Yeah, <laughs> you shouldn't. You shouldn't. Uh, uh, Dr. Montgomery, you have questions for Ms. Taylor, who's running for state rep? Well, I have a question first, uh, if you don't mind. Uh, uh, he, he called in. Well, you want to go? Y'all want to go ahead? I am not here. Is this the same <laughs> Dr. Montgomery that uh, I met at my um, meet and greet at uh, okay. the what was it? Um, rain, a touch of rain. It was a touch of rain, but it was actually mine and but you were welcome to be there. Thank you for remembering. No problem, no problem. <laughs> Good to talk to you again. It's nice speaking to you, too. All right, I was just, uh, so, wanted to talk about so a school, so, so, school choice, but go ahead. Okay, school choice. Oh. What is your thoughts on school choice? Oh, yeah, when, um... When basically when um, I heard your name, I remember you had an HB, HBCU um, start a school, right? A Head Start school. No, actually, this is the same gentleman. Actually, you are mixing me up with Timothy Goler, who is a fellow alumni of Norfolk State uh, Historically Black College. But no, Tim was actually the one who was running the HBCU uh, charter school at the time. Got it. Got it. Okay. So, my doctor is in education, so let's talk schools first. So, how do you feel about these charter schools taking um, money away from the public school education? And how do you feel about the funding formula in general? Well, honestly, um, I like House Bill 290, which will actually, uh, the money would follow the, the kid instead of going to the school. Um, any, any, Legislate. I mean, well, any uh, area, school district in which that is failing could benefit from House Bill uh, 290. And um, it, to me, it would make it so that the best education is given to the, to the child versus having them go to whatever school is in their school district. Okay, well, so, Ms. Taylor, um, here's the problem. Charter schools who are brand new, you know, thinking new, only been there a couple, two, three years, are simply failing schools for quite some time. And what has happened is parents have brought so much faith in the public schools that they will go past a high performing public school in Cleveland to go to a charter school that is not performing as well. So it's not really a great thing for you to take money out of the public school and send it with the child to a school that is failing. So that's part one. Part two is that when you think about the DeRoff case, which is the unconstitutional funding formula for the state of Ohio that we've had in place for about 20 years now, instead of having a bill that focuses on um, equalizing funding, and when I mean equalizing is funding needs to be based on the type of environment that the child is being schooled in. So it costs more money to educate a child in poverty than it does kids who live out in Green or in Cedar Falls or in Eastwood. So, but the difference is, we give the Eastwood School District and the Cleveland School District the same amount of money. Correct. So what happens is, when you take a child to a public school, and he says, oh, well, I want a new opportunity for my child at the charter school that's failing, the money now leaves the school that was already underfunded in the first place. So, so I hope that if you, you know, so I hope that if you, if you know, do have the opportunity, then you'll take that understanding into the state house because what you just said is untenable for what we have currently going on. That idea is actually what is destroying our public schools. So, so again, I'm not saying that the person has to go to a charter school. I said the parents... No, 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 no. However it's set up right now is not how House Bill 290 were brought. So the current... The current setup on how the funds are being distributed is not how it will be distributed in House Bill 290. Again, the money would follow the child. So if they choose to go to a private school, if they choose to go to a Catholic school, if they choose to go to an HBCU 
prep school. If they choose to go to a uh, a charter school or a uh, magnum school, they can do that. It will actually be up to the parent to decide and do the research for themselves and go online and see what schools are doing their best. Because again, if it's a $10,000, say we're spending $10,000 per student, and that check is now going to the parent, that parent can send their kid to a school that's pay, that's eight thousand dollars, ten thousand, or they can put twelve thousand dollars with it and send them to one of the best schools in the district. That's up to the parent. So again, that that responsibility should be up to the parent on what school those kid their kids should be going to because they know what kind of education that their kid can best learn from. First of all, that's not true. So you're saying that parents have no clue on their kids' education. Can, can, can I interrupt for some? Hey, 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 you know me longer than that. All right, so <laughs> let, let, let Ms. Taylor answer the question. Again. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, go ahead. Again, but so. don't repeat what you just said. Uh, oh, here's my thing. Here is my thing. What I'm not trying to do is uh, pretty much have this <laughs> argument with you about some one or two. No, no, no. So, but one or two people, one or two people that might, may not be uh, able to choose their, their kids' school. The majority of the people in Cleveland would like to have, and we're just talking about Cleveland because my district is bigger than Cleveland, okay? So I have Maple Heights and Garfield Heights, and their education system is doing very well. Way better than you Cleveland. Are also incorrect. Please look at the uh, chat. Uh, uh, Please, everybody wants to support Clear Parents. Please listen to what she just said. Garfield and Maple Heights are doing quite well. Please uh, they, have, they have they have higher ratings than the Cleveland Municipal School District, though. All right. So, okay. It doesn't matter. We ha they have higher. The point. Cleveland, 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 Cleveland is ranked like almost 600. Okay. Uh, uh, Again, uh. They have all right. So, all right. Everybody, go to their rooms right now. Let me. Um. Let's break them out. Let, let's. Uh, okay. Oh, uh, we was about to touch on that on the next topic, yeah, but you want to? We're talking you, about you, education you. right now because it's so much more to education, and we're not done. What do, What do you think as an educator about uh, House Bill ninety nine? Yeah. What do you think about Roe versus and no, no, we're, no, 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 sir. We're, hey, we're hey, literally, hey. we're literally on education right now because the, I have more, more bills to talk about as far as education goes. Because our kids are very important. They're they're building prisons based on our educational system and how many kids are being graduated. So I'm trying to keep kids out of prison. So right now we're talking about what. It's that's also that is false. Taylor. Okay. That is, that is a, a non-educated myth. Okay. The idea that we, that 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 they're building prisons based on the performance of these kids is not true. That's it's funny because it's mighty funny that Cuyahoga County uh, Cleveland schools are failing and they want to build another prison, a brand new one, okay, that holds more people in downtown Cleveland right now. Well, see, here's the problem. I, I care less about the size of the prison and more about the laws that inequitably put people like me in there. <laughs> so that's, that's, let's get, let's get to the root. Well, uh, not having a good education, not being able to read when you graduate is very important. If, if Cleveland has a 65% illiteracy rate, then Cleveland schools are not doing their jobs. 
Well, that's not a secret, which is why I was baffled when you compared Garfield and Maple with one of the worst performing school districts in the country. And that's what I'm talking about, making sure that Cleveland has the best education, making sure that the like schools the in Cleveland are performing like the suburban schools surrounding it. So, how is the funding formula going to change for the school district? Again, that, the money that, will follow the kid and not the school. That, let, well, let me tell you, as an education researcher, you look at how school funding works from state to state. That is only going to continue to deteriorate the inner city public schools. No, it won't. It will only bring the best schools and the best education oh. into, that's it. Because people, parents will how stop. How do you find a best school? Um, a school that's not rated a C minus. Because I remember well, being in school and you can't pass college grades, you can't pass with a C minus. Well, I guess that's the best you can do is pass with a C minus. Right, well, but that's barely passing. All right. Well we go we gotta go to break for just a second. We will come back with your question. Done, Mary. <laughs> We're not done yet. Tell hold out. Hold on for just a second. We'll be back with the Roe versus Wade question. Well, let me give my regards to Taylor. Anybody who wants to run for public office. You give up a whole lot of your personal life and you have to deal with just cold people like me. So hats off to anybody who wants to run for a public office. We'll, you know, unpack that whole Republican uh, declaration later on. Thank you, um, Mr. Gardner and Jay. It's always good to be Well, Jay's not. This I'm doing this so. I'm I'm doing. Thank you, doctor. All right. Recovery. Thank you. Well, well, thank you. Uh, all right. We'll be right back. Peace. <laughs> so let me try to get.